Welcome back to the vlog guys and welcome to another beautiful day here in Arizona. I'm heading out to do some practice today. I just got my bush wheels as you guys can see, 29 inch air streaks. I'm really excited. I went out actually two days ago with my son to work on wheel landings, did a video for you guys and the audio was corrupted. So we're actually heading back out to do some more wheel landing practice. But what I wanna really do today, I wanna go out and do some stalls, kinda of really get a really good baseline of where this thing is stalling, so I kinda of know where my limits are. And then also start working on the transition from like the rudder pedals up to the brakes, just so that I can get my landing distance down, because right now it's kind of an awkward, touchy, feely thing. So anyways, let's just get going and go fly. So one of the very first things I realize with these bigger tires is it throws my fuel gauges off when I'm just sitting here. It thinks that I have more than I do. So I need to figure that out. Maybe get a dipstick or something because before I could just turn it on, take a look at it. I would know, but now because all the fuel is sitting so much further back in the wing, it thinks that it has more. So, all right, well, let's taxi. I've already got the weather, but the weather is basically well, beautiful as you guys can see. Wind's coming out of 160 at three knots, so we'll take off the runway 17. Nobody's behind me, so let me do a quick run up right here. 4,000 RPM. Check our ignition. Look just for my RPM right here. This doesn't drop below 300. Head over here to my page. My volts are charging. Go to idle. Idles nicely. All right, fuel caps. I did check. I've replaced the seals. Some of you guys, maybe you missed those other videos. I replaced the seals and they're not leaking anymore. Our brakes, our controls, our flaps, our trim. Our radios are already on there. Our car P we don't have. Transponder is on. Lights I don't have. A board if we're not taking off or anything just seems a little off, we'll just stop on the runway, it's really long. Gangman okay, traffic, Terminal 24, Kilo Bravo would be departing runway 17 with a northbound departure. Gangman. Okay, approach is looking good. And departure is looking good. Here we go. All right, let's get these flaps out. Hit the brakes. That's one thing I noticed with these things is you really feel a lot more like the inertia of the wheels wobbling around out there. Traffic, Kipbox, Super Kilo, Bravo, making a left-hand turn to the north. Kingman. So it was showing 13 gallons when I was sitting on the ground. Weird. So this one's saying 11, this one's saying 13. Now it's saying 12. They weren't quite that. I would say they were a little bit lower than that. I would have thought maybe 10 and 10. Something like that. Well, let's get out here to the north a little bit over some of these open fields, which is pretty much all of Arizona. Do some stalls and start seeing what kind of uh, miles per hour this thing stalls at. I keep saying knots, I know, but it is miles an hour and I might change that. Well, density altitude today is 4,500, so it's about a thousand foot higher than what the actual elevation is. There's 5,000. So let's just go ahead and level up here. I'm not sure if you guys caught any of the other videos. I did fix the autopilot on this. It was just a loose ground wire underneath the instrument panel. So basically you have your servos. You can flip those on here and then you have your autopilot button right here. That's just going to do your heading mode basically. It, doesn't ha it does have altitude, but when I hit altitude, it's going to start trimming right here. There you go. You can see the little trim thing doesn't really know what to do and it just starts brimming and it just kind of searches for it. So I need to go into this configuration and, and make some adjustments on 
how much the servers are wanting to move for my altitude because it's just, it's not properly set up for that. But as far as heading goes, it is heading, and I mean, you could just manually trim it out right here and just finger touch, you know, another touch this thing and it, it holds your altitude pretty well, which will be really nice for longer trips. And it actually links in with the, the Garmin 496. So if I have an actual track in there, it will follow the track itself. Well, this looks like a good enough place as any, so let's hope our autopilot off here and start slowing on down. Basically, what I want to find out is what it's going to stall at with my flaps. Find out what VSO is, basically full flaps, landing configuration, so that I know how slow I can come in on the approach safely without stalling and falling into the ground. So once we're below this little white arc right here, it starts to look like 92. Hello. We'll go get our flaps in nice and slow, just so it's not jerking us all around. Start trimming. This thing goes, when you have full flaps, you have to have all the way back trim. It's pretty crazy. There's full flaps. Trim is all the way back. All right, so let's find out what it is with just no power. There's 45. Wow, oh, this is a really docile airplane. Okay, 45. Maybe 46. Let's try to do a, just a little bit of power and see if we can hold it off for just a little bit longer. There's 44. Just dragging it in really. 40, yeah, 42 maybe. Oh, right there, 42. So with a little bit of power, 42. No power, let's try it again. There's idle. Oh, there we go, that was 43 as well. Wow, this is like the most gentle airplane I've ever stalled in my life. <laughs> Let's try a little bit with power. I'm kind of shocked how easy this airplane is to fly. All right, there's 41. Yeah, okay. 41 miles an hour. Not sure what that is in knots, maybe a little bit less. Trying this thing, because that seems a little lower than I thought it should be. Just add some more and more, well, yep, about 42, 43. All right, well, let's get these flaps out. Head on up here and start working on uh, some uh, off-airport landings. I actually did my very first off-airport landing up here. I had it filmed for you, like for you guys, but like I said, the audio was corrupted. I wish I would have been able to give you guys kind of my initial impressions because I had never flown with Bush tires before, never taken off, never even been in an airplane with them. So this is the first for me. And um, another pilot was like, "Hey, just to let you know, like with those bigger tires, they're pretty grippy. So this, and, and it's a lot of inertia to start, you know, turning around." So on your first couple landings, be sure to kind of be ready for it to kind of want to grip, you know, and don't let that catch you off guard. But it was good that he had given me that little bit of insight because, yeah, the first couple times I was like, whoa, that's like, wants to like, not like nose over, but just like grip your tires. Just a different experience I've never had before. So we're going to come up here. I'm just going to be practicing some wheel landings, directional control first and just kind of work into this. And then I'm gonna start practicing kind of the transition from my feet up to the brakes. So feet from the rudders, which my heels are on the on the ground, up to the brakes. Basically you just, it's not like you have to pick them up. It's just like you just rotate them. But doing it evenly so that your directional control is still straight. Because not all airplanes brakes are are perfectly even, so sometimes you might have to push one a little bit more than the other to maintain directional control. And that's really what I want to do is just get very uh, comfortable and competent in this specific airplane because competence, uh, you do lose it. <laughs> so if I were to want to find out what my VSO would be for this airplane, it was stalling at 45 knots. General rule of thumb, 
45 knots, I mean miles an hour, times 1.3 is 58.5. So really 59 miles an hour would be what my VRAP or approach speed would be if I went with a 1.3. Now that's just like for your general landings and whatever else. Now if you're trying to do like a really short landing, then really I'd be coming in probably closer to like uh, I'd probably be keep my whole approach would be coming in at probably 59 to 60, but then really over the numbers is where I'm really going to be coming back a lot of my power when I'm really close to the ground, really getting behind that power curve. Because with a little bit of power on landing, it can land, well, it was stalling around 42 miles an hour. I think the lowest was 41, but more 42. I have some VGs, which are vortex generators. You can go Google them and see exactly what they do, but basically little tiny shark fins that go along the wing and underneath the elevator. Or, the, I'm sorry, the horizontal back there. And it keeps it keeps the airflow over the wing for a longer period of time so your wings don't stall into a slower airspeed. That's basically what they do. So basically you can come in the shorter airstrips at a slower airspeed and get on the ground slower and stop quicker. That's what they do. So tomorrow morning, I'm flying out to Nevada, about a five and a half, six hour flight, north of Reno to Dead Cow Lake Bed, High Sierra fly-in. You're gonna wanna make sure you get those videos. They're coming up next after these videos. So check out this video at the end of the video here. I'll post it up in the corner over here. If you wanna see High Sierra fly-in, Basically, it's like nerd fest for bush pilots and backcountry pilots. I'm hoping to do a collab with maybe Trent Palmer, maybe some other guys. There's a bunch of other YouTubers I know are going out there, so I'm excited about meeting some other YouTubers that I've watched over the years because really, watching Trent Palmer and some other people that have their own airplane, I never considered ever buying my own airplane, never even wanted to. And then learning about experimentals, I was like, wow, like, that actually looks like a lot of fun to go out and have fun with friends and do off airport landings and be able to customize your plane like a car however you want and not be restricted by a certification that you'd have with like a Cessna or something. We're going to do a low pass over where I'm coming out here to first just, be just because we've had some rain and, and the last time I came out here, uh, well the first time it was per perfectly flat everywhere. Second time, we had some rain and then I had some like, I don't know, fissures or, had some like crevices that were, you know, like a foot, foot and a half deep in some places. So I want to make sure where I'm going to be touching down doesn't have any of those. There's no power lines out here. There's, there's really, well, you can see, there's nothing. Now there's a fence line about halfway down. On the other side of that is where I'm going to do all my touch and goes and all that fun stuff. Maybe I might pile up some grass or something like that. Now some of you guys also have asked, do these tires slow your airplane down? From what I've seen, like two miles an hour is all I'm, I'm indicating really that I've noticed. Let's get our flaps in. coming in, we're below 90. Start trimming it out. Hudson along here at 78 miles an hour. Yeah, so right here, you guys can see some of these big old crevices coming through here. Yeah, and they're like, I don't know, eight inches deep or so. Oh, my tire falling into one of those. Now, there's some tires here. This might be a really good place to do some touch and goes so that I have like a marker. Okay, here's the fence up here. Yeah, let's do that. All right, 
so much fun, let me tell you. I'm gonna walk down these tires right here and I'm gonna set them up so that I have more of like a, a defined, like this is where I wanna touch down. And then maybe do it down there as well, just so that I can come out here in the future. I don't know who left these tires out here, but hey, I'm gonna use them. Let's go see if we can land in between those wheels. Not sure how far that is, but not very. I'll go full flaps. This fence line seems to be working pretty well for turning around. All right. Oh, I put those tires really close together. <laughs> We come over here to where I'm a little more centered up with them. A little bit high. Yeah, I probably should have made them a little bit wider than that. I'm not gonna go past them, I know I am. another go. There we go. That was a little better. But now really what I need to do is just kind of hone in on getting those Tight pictures down to where I know at let's say 55 knots or 52 knots or something like that being very precise that I know I'm going to float, well not float or float, a very specific amount of distance. Actually coming past this fence actually sets me up a little bit better. Just a little more time to get down on my speed that I want, 58 right now. I want to be 55. Full squirrely. All right, this one we're going to try to do um, a stop, like a full stop on it. So we'll see if we touch down right at the tires and do a full stop without really overheating my brakes. I don't want to warp anything now that I have to pay for, <laughs> pay for everything. Doesn't really stop very fast, but it's not terrible. Here we go. I got three notches of flaps that time and I actually only wanted two. We'll do another full stop on this one as well. I think the wind's coming this way because I feel like a lot slower coming in this way than I do the other way just as far as ground speed. Uh, actually, no, that looks like there's zero wind up here, so never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. Someone's calling me. I'm gonna end this vlog right here because, well, this is a good place to end it. I'm just gonna be heading back, kind of a boring flight. Consider subscribing if you guys do like this kind of content, if you'd like to watch my journey. I really would like to get into stall drag and like the short takeoff and landing competitions. Not quite yet, as you can see, but I do want to 
maybe modify this a little bit better so that I can be a little bit more uh, competitive in that type of realm. Be sure to check back in my next video. I'm going out to High Sierra Fly-In. Like I said, Nerd Fest for all backcountry pilots. I'm gonna be out there for like five days. Really excited about it. I'm really excited about, again, maybe doing some collaborations with some other YouTubers out there as well. So thanks guys for watching. See you guys next time.